Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Asian Blokes, a podcast where we talk about Asian pop culture, film, TV shows, music, video games, anime, comic books, food, whatever we're feeling at the time, really. My name is Dan with H, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Tavi. Hi, Tavi. Hi, Dan. What's going on? Uh, not much. We've got, a, we've got a bit of flooding going on in, in New South Wales here. Yeah, has that affected you at all? Nah, not, yeah, not even a little bit. I imagine that you're the, that you're the, um, you're the rich family in Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> that is just like, yeah, what a beautiful day. Everything's all clean. You're, you're those guys. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> if, if we're using that arcane analogy, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Piltfort kind of guy. <laughs> Wait, pil- it, Piltover, it's, Piltover. Uh, it's Piltover. <laughs> We're talking about a completely random topic. Yeah, this is because, a bit of uh, a uh, bit of a <laughs> uh, curveball you've thrown me. I'm not, I was not prepared for this for this episode and recording. <laughs> well, this 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 idea started because on, on the weekend uh, I was out with a couple of friends and I was just like looking at the at our Instagram that you posted and I was at some like some pup bin soup place after hot pot and it was like fairly loud i guess and then i saw that you posted the um uh i think you were eating japanese food or something and then like, i was just like listening to the song i'm like this is a pretty crap song <laughs> so, like, i i decided to be a troll and then and then you know criticize your uh your music taste to my much more Refined music tastes, but yeah. I actually listen. I actually looked at that post again. Mm. Yeah, the music's not that bad. Yeah, I, was, like, I couldn't understand yeah, why, yeah. why you hated it so much. Because like when I when I heard it, like amongst all the other sound, it just sounded like a very generic song that you just like picked off a stock website. <laughs> but actually, it's okay. <laughs> so I was just being a bit of a prick. <laughs> So yeah, we're like you know, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about music. Basically, you wanted to do a music episode so you could throw your more refined music taste in my face. Is that what you? <laughs> is that oh, what yeah, you most def- oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Basically, it's more of uh, like, oh yeah, who, whoever looks at the uh, Instagram, that that's Dan's taste. That's <laughs> Okay, I see. You don't like a tubby, you make your own posts. Better, better music next time, please. Yeah, it'll be it'll be all Radiohead, all Bon Iver all the time. <laughs> but yeah, no, we we always talk about uh, we always talking about music in your intros. We're preparing like a big episode for like the Oscars, so we wanted to do a bit of a shorter snippet, even looser than what we already do. Mm. This this might give some insight on what two Asian blokes likes to listen to mm. every now and again. Aside from um, our own voices while we're editing yeah, yeah. for yeah, hours true. on end. <laughs> oh, I guess I get so sick of listening to our voices, but I still listen to the still listen to the the podcast when they come out. I never get like, sick like, of it, Tavi. It's all I listen to <laughs> all day, every day. Is, is two Asian blokes. Yeah, I've I've heard from our tester, aka your partner, that you're like listen to us in the shower yeah it's the <laughs> podcast you can listen to anywhere you listen to it at the gym listen to it on the train listen to it in the shower i listen to it to help me sleep <laughs> well, <laughs> that works <laughs> but i think like risky mentions that he like puts on the hurts where it's like super relaxing to listen to and it's mm. just like yeah so that's a little that's a little bit of post production magic. Well, I mean, we we probably should have gone risky on this episode if we wanted to talk about music, right? He's he's our <laughs> like for those of yeah, you that don't true. know, he's our sound guy. So he makes all of the music for our intros and outros, and they're really yeah. good. Like, yeah, he's a very talented dude. He's actually the best part of our podcast, and we don't even mention him in the name of our podcast. The two Asian blokes in the name. Neither of them are you, Risky. I want to make that clear. <laughs> Making that clear right now. Yeah, and I guess we'll find out more about what he thinks about our tastes in music. But I mean, like, uh, I, I've I've given you, I've given us like three rough questions mm. to carry us through this episode. And the first one I posed to you was like, what what kind of music did you grow up with? So I guess it's like. Mm. You know what phases did you have? What did you listen to in high school? Okay. What do you listen to? Yeah. People that know me probably know that I'm not the biggest music fan. Probably the main time that I actually listened to music was maybe in high school or even late primary school. Back when, you know, I was rocking a a Sony Discman. 
with the dispens, man. <laughs> without anti skip technology. So every time you you know you can't really listen to it while you're walking. <laughs> oh, fuck anti skip technology. Yeah, can't believe that was a revolution. I, I had an anti I had an anti skipped Walkman. It's a game it changer, sick. man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you don't have anti skip, you can't walk around and listening to music. It, nah. It's like you you're good on the train. On the bus, it's you, you can't do it, but on the train, it's okay for the most part. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's when I listened to most of my music was like commuting from home to high school. Like I went to school in the city. Yeah, it's about a forty-minute train ride. So hmm. you know that's a that's an album. That's enough time to listen to one album. What were you listening to in high school? I was I was part of the Asian crowd, the small Asian crowd that that was in my high school. I was a part of that clique. So a lot of what I listened to was like that kind of R&B sound of the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm, So, you know, your things like your Usher, uh, Nelly, R. Kelly. You know, if I was feeling fancy, I'd listen to something older like Michael Jackson. You know, that that kind of stuff. Um, Yeah, yeah. Thinking about it now, a lot of the artists I listen to have been cancelled. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, like you said, R. Kelly. Yeah. But, mm, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to admit to listening to R. Kelly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a different time, guys. It, it was. Oh, actually, it might have been around the time he was peeing on people. But no, nah, he was peeing because <laughs> Ch- Ch- Chappelle's show came out in two thousand and two or three. Uh, yeah. And he yeah. was like, he already had the piss on you skit sure. by then. So, yeah, R. Kelly was pissing on people already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Like, he, even something like Michael Jackson, he, he might have done some terrible things to kids, but, at, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of person to separate the art from the artist. I don't know. Yeah. That's just yeah, me. No, that's, yeah, that's me as well. Like, that's interesting that you, you said you grew up with a mostly Asian crowd because I remember when we were hanging out, you were, like, listening to some like Chinese ballads mm-hmm. and even like some of the earlier K-pop stuff. K-pop was in the mix there as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Old stuff like Boa and, and, and Rain and Xinhua and all that stuff. Um, the Chinese yeah. pop was there from like, you know, given to me by my Chinese friends. Um, mm. And yeah, it was all right. Like, even though I couldn't understand the language, same with K-pop, it's like you get into the vibe, I guess. Mm, yeah. So yeah, I listen to some some Jay Chow. I like Jay Chow. I think he's he's a pretty good musician. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't I couldn't name a Jay Chow. I don't think yeah. I can't name um, any Jay Chow songs, but oh, I can. But um, you know, that was a long time ago. I've been listening yeah. to him in a long time. Um, but yeah, yeah. When I got to uni, it was that transition from from discmans to MP3 players to iPods. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I never really I never was wealthy enough to get an iPod Classic, I guess. <laughs> or I just never felt like it was worth me investing money in one. So that's when like I kind of trailed off on the music scene and, and wasn't listening to as much music. Uh mm. with the exception of like when I was at home and I just wanted something like to put on in the background while I was doing other stuff. Mm. And and yeah, all of those would be kind of old old LPs, like the stuff that I listened to in high school. Probably Usher. There's a lot yeah. of Usher involved. So you, 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 you wouldn't say that your music taste really changed too much from high school to uni? Yeah, not really. Yeah, I think the frequency at which I listened to the music changed, but probably the, mm. yeah, into the same stuff. I think I went through a rap phase as well, so I was really into like all kinds of rap um, mm. at some point. But um, yeah, that passed pretty quickly as well. Um, but yeah, how about you? What did you grow up with? Uh, it's funnily enough, uh, the high school that I went to was uh, predominantly like, well, I was basically one of the only Asian kids in my high school. Um, but I was really into metal and like rock and mm-hmm. punk rock. I mean, like even before then in primary school, a lot of the kids were mostly Italian. So I was into like techno, but like, I didn't really like music that much back then. Right. But yeah, during high school, uh, I was listening to a lot of Slipknot, Blink-182. In terms of like the biggest bands that I listened to back then, and then I still listen to quite a lot now. Yeah, it would be. I'd, I'd listen to Slipknot. I listened to Tool, kind of like a 
early early 90s like prog metal band so Mm -hmm. i I like to like really long songs right okay like very progressive songs that go for like 10 minutes because (laughs) of tool sure Uh, you probably remember my my muse phase oh yeah Um, i was really really into muse that seemed to go Um, on forever yeah yeah (laughs) um I, i still listen to them every now and again yeah but they've kind of dropped off a little bit um i think most people kind of feel that way but yeah, they they put on some great arena spectaculars, and I've seen them live quite a few times. Mm. But then I think ne- nearing the end of my high school phase and like post high school, I really got into like alternative music. You mentioned Radiohead before, uh-huh. so I'm still <laughs> I'm still a big big Radiohead fan. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, I listen. You're an Aussie guy. You're an Aussie guy in your mid, in your your mid to early thirties. So you know, yeah, yeah, it's well within your right to like Radiohead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I still listen to Bon Iver every now and again. But yeah, my my tastes are quite like strange. Some people have described it as fairly eclectic because mm. I, I like you know hip hop. You know, I was a big fan of Tyler when he was coming up. Uh, I'll still listen to like uh, Freddie Gibbs, yeah. uh, Mad Mad Villain. I mean MF Doom. You know, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. I really love the the first Wu Tang Clan album. You know, the Thirty Six Chambers. That okay. shit is like still slaps hard to this day, man. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. Yeah, like uh, when I was hanging out with you guys at the land cafes and stuff, and yeah. I, I kind of was getting into k-pop because <laughs> i initially i initially hated asian pop when i first heard it because i just thought it was um not cool did you think yes, it was not cool I, I, would, I would say that it was, <laughs> i thought it was very uncool uh-huh. i don't listen to soft dash shit <laughs> back, 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 back then, you know yeah but um yeah obviously these days i get it i, I think there's there's always an initial pushback against k-pop especially for guys i reckon yeah. um yeah it just like doesn't seem like the type of thing that you should be listening to and enjoying. Yeah, but but now now I listen to it pretty like liberally. Like, but when you first got into I'm, it, were you into it ironically? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Boone is basically the biggest in- K-pop instigator <laughs> in my life, and it's kind of a funny story. Go on, go on, tell the story. When we were at the Lan Cafe, we would often like take breaks and then just watch YouTube shit. And, and Boone was really pushing, like, a girl's generation onto me. Yeah. And then I remember when he first in- introed me to it, I'm like, man, I don't really like this shit. <laughs> and he's like, no, man, this is just awesome, man. <laughs> and we, and we, were just, we were just watching it every day. And then, like, eventually it's like, you know, it goes to, oh, yeah, you pick your, pick your favorite, which we, we translated to who's your bias. And then, yeah, eventually I would just, like, listen to it and then, get into the the visual aspect of it Mm -hmm. and then here i am today where i was even like listening to uh listening to twice when i was driving today you know (laughs) i like putting it on when i'm driving some of my younger friends because it's like that same thing it's like it's very uncool so So, like i i play it to like piss piss them off oh okay so your young (laughs) your young friends don't like k-pop no not really okay that's interesting (laughs) I, i like i like to play it to just annoy people. I thought it was growing in popularity with with the younger generation, but um, I guess it, all, it kind, I guess all your young is, friends yeah. are all your young friends are, are cool movie people, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so I guess they wouldn't like K pop. <laughs> uh, I I, know, I, know, I knew some of them liked it a little bit, but mm. it's mostly like this shit's pretty lame, and I'm like, nah, man, it's the best. And then I'll turn it on now. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's probably harder for like musicians to enjoy k-pop i don't Mm. don't know i probably get a lot of hate for this but i don't know how much musicianship is actually in in (laughs) k-pop um Um, yeah (laughs) i'm gonna have to ask the same question (laughs) i mean it's it takes a lot of skill to manufacture a great (laughs) k-pop song (laughs) but i don't know if it's musicianship per se i think a lot of it is is branding um you know marketing and of course, a lot of hard work from the artists themselves too. I'm not. You yeah, know, yeah. They're, they're all very talented, and they all work very hard. There, there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Yeah, and for that's sure. the same with like all pop music. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I think, like, the aspect of, like, it being Asian as well kind of, like, just draws me naturally to it. Like, mm. it's such a surface level thing because I, I, like, rarely, rarely listen to American pop or, I mean, I don't listen to Australian pop. Mm. Like, I, I, listen I don't to, even I listen know what Australian ironically. pop is. But um, speaking of Australian pop, though, I, I, I bring this up. I was talking to my partner about it, actually. You ever watch Australian Idol? I've seen an episode before, yeah, bits and pieces. Like, would you be able to differentiate between Australian Idol season one and Australian Idol, Idol season two? Oh, like, if I, mean, I if, if I if say, I'm looking, if, I, if I'm looking at the camera technology, and just like you know, well, I'm a, let me let me throw some names out at you and see if you recognize them. Guy Sebastian, yeah, season yeah, yeah. one. Okay, Shannon Noel. He was season one. Yes, as well? yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the final two with Guy Sebastian. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about Matt Corby? I think it was season four. Maybe. Yeah, he was in the later season. Okay, but you know who he is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He was actually a pretty decent musician. He had that song that you had as your ringtone for like the longest time. Uh, yeah, it was my alarm because it goes Ooh, yeah, yeah. at the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a good song, though. I like that song. So. Um, I don't know. I feel like he tried to break away from that stigma of, yeah. of Australian Idol, maybe unsuccessfully. I mean, I, I heard from interviews and stuff that he wanted to do more alternative songs, but the show would have let him. Mm. And that's the thing I don't like about those reality singing shows. It's skewing. It's not real one enough point for you. View. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that. It's just skewing like this one type of music. What it's saying. So this is what I'm getting from the show. Like this is the best of the best, you know? And it's going to be, like, this type of voice, this type of music, this type of image. And it's just, like, it's just not. There are a lot of bands and stuff with singers that who aren't particularly good, but they're, like, got good personalities or the music's really good. Like, I remember watching this one episode. I think it was one of the idols, or it was a clip on YouTube, and this dude did a a cover of, Mm -hmm. like, Parkway Drive, mm-hmm. which is like an uh, Australian metalcore band, actually. They're, they're really sick. Right. And this guy did a cover of one of the songs, and he did really, really well. But the way that they edited the show like made him look like he was some kind of freak and weirdo. Mm. And it's just like, man, fuck you guys. <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, this guy is actually really talented, and you're making him look like he's got some kind of like mental problem or disability and then Mm. after that i'm just like nah fuck all of these shows Mm. and like it's just you know it's just it's just crap music to be (laughs) honest (laughs) it's just the way they go about it it's just like it's this one type of this one type of singing is the the pinnacle of singing and i just don't agree with that yeah, um, I guess they they frame things as if they are pushing an eclectic style of music. Like they always have those themes, like it's blues night or it's yeah, you know, no, it's, it's all it's a fuck, it's a fucking but illusion, like it, man. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's at the end of the day, it is manufacturing pop stars. So yeah, you know, that's yeah. that's the sound that they're looking for as a, as a pop sound. Uh, yeah, I remember there was this one contestant named Bobby Flynn, and he had like this really unique sound. Um, mm-hmm. And, yeah, he was actually pretty popular. He had, like, a really unique look. He looked like Sideshow Bob. He, like, had this massive, <laughs> massive do um, and was really tall and lanky. Um, and, yeah, like, he made it into maybe the top five before um, getting eliminated. Um, mm. And then, like, I looked it up, him up fairly recently just to see if he was still doing music. And um, mm. no, nah, no, nah, he's got like a government job, <laughs> which is, oh. <laughs> yeah, which is, I mean, it's kind of sad. I mean, he's just living his life, you know, he's, but that's, that's, that's the fate of the Australian media show musician, yeah. Yeah. unfortunately, before we get too far into talking about <laughs> Australian reality shows, yeah. what, uh, what have you been listening to? What have you been listening to recently? See, that's the thing, Tavi. Um, <laughs> they just listen to the same things. Yeah, that that's exactly it, actually. Um, yeah. Like, I'm just looking. I went to the gym today because, mm. you know, I want to stay healthy and shit. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I was looking at my eye, Apple, because I use Apple Music, like a stooge <laughs> that's not into music. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, just looking at um, some of the songs, like, on my playlist, it's, like, old weekend songs, like, mm. you know, 
Save Your Tears is here. There's like some K-pop here, but it's like Zion T. Um, oh, yeah. Zion, Zion T is pretty cool, though. Yeah, I like Zion T. Yeah. Uh, some really old Big Bang stuff, like Bad Boy, <laughs> of which oh, is yeah. like uh, 2010, maybe. Um, what, have I, what else have I got? I've got some Twice in here. I've got some Georgie. I like Georgie. Oh, yeah, Georgie. Yeah, th- mm. Georgie is he's pretty cool. I listen to some of his stuff every now and again. Yeah, some of the 88 Rising stuff is pretty good. Yeah, 88 yeah. Rising, they're, they're pretty cool. I like um, uh, that that one Rich Brian song, These Nights, and it's got uh, Chunga. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that song that song's cool. It's just like a really kind of like almost old school, slightly city pop vibe. Yeah, 88 Rising, like that that company is it's good. They're like, you know, promoting a lot of the um, Asian American artists. Yeah. Um, I was listening to a yeah. song called California, which is Rich Brian, uh, Nikki and Warren Hugh. It's a, oh, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. nice track. Actually, they, um, 88 Rising, they signed on like this Japanese girl group artist called Atarashi Gako. Oh, yeah. That's come up on my YouTube feed. Yeah. Um, Are they yeah, good? I've been listening to them. They're yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty quirky. Like, I, how would I describe their music? It's a little bit like chaotic, kind of like almost chaotic jazz rock ish. And like they, a lot of their stuff is like these really odd choreographed dances. It translates to new school, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, a particular song that I've been listening to a lot is um, "Pineapple Kryptonite." Which is it's pretty cool. the The music video has got that kind of nineteen seventies like grindhouse look. Though it's mm. not an especially violent clip. It's not violent at all, actually. Um, <laughs> they did a they did a cover of Intergalactic, which okay. was cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, I've been listening to them a lot. Actually, it's interesting because I've I've been looking at my um my Spotify, and I guess like. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of J-pop, it seems. Okay. So I've been listening to this... Um... Have you just been listening to Love and Peace on repeat? <laughs> <laughs> I can't find that album on Spotify, actually. Yeah. I'd want to li- I want to listen to it. I think you, you um, probably can only find it on YouTube, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've been listening to this, this Japanese um, indie band called Hitsujin Bongaku. I think that's how you say it. They're like this three-piece female band. And it's kind of like a lot of their sound is very like if... Uh, do you know the Smashing Pumpkin songs, 1979? I think you know that I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Far, man. It's, like, it's, it's classic. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, it's kind of like this kind of very nostalgic sounding kind of soft rock song. Um, and it's basically... Their sound is like that, but like tenfold. So yeah, it's like this kind of very like relaxing music. A lot of Japanese bands have this sense of um, nostalgia and longingness, I guess. Uh-huh. This underlying melancholy. But they're not like a depressing band or anything. Um, but yeah, their stuff is really cool. Um, you should check out 1999. Um, that song is is cool and it's the easiest one to google because all their songs are either in kanji or katakana i can read some of the katakana stuff but like i just have to remember some of the symbols if i want to listen to <laughs> a particular song right um but yeah they're really cool oh yeah i i do know this song 1979 by smashing pumpkins yeah 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 there you go you, right. you, you, do, you do that yeah <laughs> it's one of those songs where you know it when you hear it Everybody's yeah, yeah. heard it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I've had quite a few different phases like leading up to now. I mean, I listen to a lot of metalcore. Like, I really am a big fan of Architects. Mm. I've seen them live a couple of times, but then I'll listen to like instrumental stuff like Bonobo, especially when I was living in Japan. The album Migration came out, and I was listening to that on the train, going to work on the train all the time. And it was such a like relaxing time. Mm. But like, yeah, when when I would like get pissed off, I'd listen to like metalcore on the trains. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, I I mean, just remembering now, I listen to like Tribe Called Quest, like some of the classic hip hop stuff. Mm. But yeah, I've been listening to a lot of uh, 
I've been seeing a lot of Japanese artists. I've been listening to this one, like, I think she's she's classified as a rapper, like, Daoko. I, I discovered her in Shibuya, actually, like, back in 2011. We were at Tower Records, and then we I was just perusing through the CDs, and then, I don't know, like, I just picked this one CD case, and it's like this the this looks cool. So then I was I just selected it. Mm. I was listening to oh yeah, this stuff is is it's pretty interesting. Uh, she was like seventeen at the time, I think. Oh yeah. Um, so she was a very like young up and coming artist who made some very like non mainstream sounds. Okay. Um, she's got like this very like whispery kind of rap voice. Mm. Um, I think I think she signed on to a major label and released like two albums after that which were admittedly just uh i still enjoy them but fairly generic pop songs Mm -hmm. but i think she has gone back to more of her independent roots yeah she's got some cool songs at the moment um you check them out okay on youtube um yeah she she did a song for like an anime which got her like nearly half a million half a billion views i think okay do you know which anime it is it was a remake of a Shunji Iwai movie. I think it's called Fireworks. Should we see it from the side or the bottom? Oh. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that anime came out like maybe a month or two after Kimi no Nawa. Mm. And it was pretty popular back then. I remember one of the students was talking about it. But yeah, she did the song for that. And then I think she got a lot of traffic her way. And she did a lot of TV appearances. But apparently she did like a bad performance on one of the shows. And then she kind of didn't perform for a little while Mm. but yeah um no she's kind of a bit more there on the indie circuit now um i watched one of her live stream shows i think it was 2020 when covid first hit it was pretty cool to watch just very intimate um when when do you do most of your music listening are um, you the type to to always be needing to listen to music whatever you're doing yeah, it's weird. Uh, I usually listen to it if I'm, like, exercising or walking. When I'm driving, uh, like, long distances, I'll listen to, like, mixes. Mm. I used to be that type where I had to have music all the time. But these days, I if I'm doing something that needs my attention, if I listen to music, I find myself listening to the music more than the task. Mm. But some, sometimes I will uh, use music to do my creative stuff. Like if I'm writing and I'm trying to get into a particular mood, I'll listen to particular songs or genres. Mm. It's funny. Cause I'm just thinking now, like usually when I give a reference to risky, cause he, him and I are working on a bunch of stuff at the moment, mm-hmm. the references, there's a very distinct theme of music that I like. <laughs> a lot of it is that kind of dreamy alt rock stuff. Uh-huh. I use Wolf Alice a lot, mm. British old band. I use them a lot as a reference as well as, yeah, some of the some of the artists that I mentioned before, I, I use them as a reference for my work. Because mm. um, yeah, I think for me, music is really important because mm. it can kind of inspire you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of like, <laughs> I will borrow borrow a lot of lines <laughs> from songs and then like put put them in put them in the scripts uh-huh. or like I'll change them around a little bit. Yeah, and like, it's not yeah, plagiarism. It's, it's an homage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting because some some of the people that I've worked with, um, and then I will show them a song or whatever. They're like, "Oh yeah, you this is you put this line into this like part," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I did do that." So you don't do it intentionally; it just seeps yeah. into your brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think okay. I, I think that's cool. Yeah, I, I don't listen to as much as I used to because I was always on trains back then, and mm. then I would just like listen to an album you know like i like listening to really like long albums Mm. um but sometimes it's harder these days because like yeah if i'm like if i'm reading a book i can sometimes listen to music really um that is hard to do yeah (laughs) but usually usually i don't usually i'll just do one task or the other now but yeah it's just it's just whenever whenever i can you know like it's it's weird because if i choose to listen to music just listening to music it feels like i should be doing something else right right but right. then like yeah yeah i, I mean I, I find music a bit distracting so i don't generally listen to it unless i'm not really doing anything that needs my attention so like something like the gym 
you know, where yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you know you're not really using your brain at all. You're just doing automatic motions. Um, mm. Yeah, I use music to kind of pass the time, but even then, you know, I might be inclined to listen to a podcast rather than music, just because for me, time passes more quickly when I'm listening to a conversation rather yeah. than when I'm listening to music. It's probably just because I've lost touch with with my musical inclinations. Mm. Um, and yeah, but like for me, the the times I listen to music is, is more for ambience rather than anything else. It's like um, yeah, that's, um, if I just want to vibe to something, you know, I'll put on some yeah. music. And, and it doesn't even have to be anything that I, you know, any, any names that I like. Uh, it can just be like a a chill hop playlist on, yeah, on yeah, YouTube, yeah. you know, just, just for that vibe. No, it's, it's pretty common. Um, I, I know a lot of friends who said like, you know, they can't just listen to music. They'll rather listen to a podcast. Um, I find <laughs> even though I'm on a podcast, but mm. like, I find if I listen to a podcast, I will just stop listening in terms of like, I stop taking in information and then I'll mm. just go into like a trance. Yeah. And I think I that did, just I happens. Could, I could see that even when we're recording our episodes, I think that probably happens to you. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> no, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, whatever dad. Yeah. 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 Your oh, basic yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, I think that just happens from, because when I'm listening to music, sometimes I'm not retaining like the lyrical content all the time, but I'm still, subconsciously absorbing the music mm. so sometimes like i'll listen to maybe 10 20 minutes of a podcast and then i'll, I'll listen to music for the rest of the way mm. uh then if i like you know sleep and listen i'm still like getting that enjoyment mm, mm, mm. what else i've been listening recently to is a lot of uh like movie soundtracks yeah um not not even just original scores like i really been digging the um Last Night in Soho soundtrack and mm. the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood soundtrack. Okay. Like, when, when I'm driving and I listen to that, it, it's very, like, energetic. But, yeah, like, during, like, you know, some short drives or if I'm, like, feeling a bit down, you know, mm. chuck on a bit of Radiohead. I, I do find it easier to listen to music when I can associate it with some kind of visual. Mm. So, like, yeah, music from movies is an example of that. But also, mm. like, back in the day, I used to play, like, video games and listen to music at the same time. Mm. Um, you know, back w when video games were not as cinematic as they are now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so things like original Tomb Raider or, like, and then when I put those tracks on, like, it reminds me of playing those games. And it kind of, mm. yeah, I guess that's the just nostalgia, really. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's it's interesting how... Uh, music can evoke memories um, like you might listen to a track mm. later down the line and, and you might be reminded of a movie and remind remember how much you like that movie and then you might watch that movie again what band or singer do you think of that is like the pinnacle of a collective asian australian experience because mm. i definitely have an answer for that and you'd probably, I reckon you'd say the same when I say it, but I just want, I'm just what, curious. Like, like, what is, like, the one band that has united, like, uh, I get, maybe for us when we were growing up, like, all the Asians just knew and loved? I don't know. I mean, if it was my group, it would probably be Usher, but I don't think that's who you have in mind. I'm going to throw Linkin Park out there. Oh, yeah, okay, of course. Every, every I don't think that's, I don't Asian. think that's um, specific nah. to Asians, though, is it? Asians love Lincoln Park. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of Japanese imagery, um, yeah, that's especially true. like they like use Gundam a lot. The reanimation album. Dude's name is basically... Mike Shinoda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I remember, I remember when we had our like loud gatherings and whatnot. Everyone was always talking about like Lincoln Park, and I know I would say Usher, but like I wasn't a big fan of Usher back <laughs> yeah. then. Um, I, I I kind of appreciate it a little bit more now because it's a bit older. But I was like. Man, everyone had this like collective agreement that Lincoln Park was sick. Yeah, you know, and rest in peace, like Chester. Mm. I I never got the chance to see them live. Um, had to do fucking exams. <laughs> but yeah, like 
I remember, you know, listening to Hybrid Theory and Meteora uh-huh. with you guys, yeah. like when we were hanging at your place and we were just like, man, this, this stuff is sick. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Even that, um, the, the live album they had, um, was it? Yeah, live, live in Texas. Yeah, live in Texas. Yeah, we, don't, we, really kept re, we kept rewinding when, like, the bass guitarist, like, trips over. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? Why did we they leave just... that in? <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, I don't know. They could have edited. They could have cut to any other shot. <laughs> yeah. But they, like, used it. Really, like, tri- Maybe we, they thought it just... was intentional. Maybe they thought it was a cool dance move that he did. <laughs> he was, like, he was, like, he was, like ro- rocking out so much that he was, he was like, tripping over. But, yeah, um, like, there, there was just, like, this massive like love of lincoln park i remember watching all the anime music videos yeah i'm pretty sure i made an anime music video using lincoln park oh yeah back in the day when they you know we, they did those um yeah. those cuts <laughs> oh man that, yeah, li- li- I, I i i drop down and listen to lincoln park every once in a while um some for nostalgia and it's good mm-hmm. music you know Mm. Even when they were getting a bit more experimental, um, mm. when I listened to that stuff again, I didn't mind it. I thought it was uh, it's pretty good. Do you like Numb Encore featuring Jay Z? I do. I do like the the Jay Z stuff. <laughs> you know the re reanimated. That's what it's called. The reanimated album. Ah, the one with all um, the hip hop artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. It's got some all the, my. <laughs> if I have one criticism, is that all the track titles ha- are like written in numbers and letters and symbols yeah, yeah, so that, they're yeah. impossible to find <laughs> on yeah, youtube true, or anything they're trying to be like super edgy <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's cool but yeah that was like the the new the new metal days when mm. i was like listening to um listening to corn those guys dropped a new album recently as well corn yeah i haven't listened to it yet but yeah some a lot of their like early thousands stuff like i'll revisit um, every now and again, it's just like it's good. Mm. Yeah, it's That's... weird because like um, not really a lot of Asians I knew really like metal. I know Boone does, and we went to a lot of gigs when we were growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, like mid twenties. But like rock music and metal is not really looked upon. And I mean, like when you're talking about your high school experience, like did you, mm. you didn't really know anyone. No, listen to that not like really why, why, why do you think that is yeah i don't know i think it's just the the sound that we grew up with like it's probably something that's been passed on generation <laughs> to generation maybe like there's less of a rock scene in asia in general and yeah um that kind of sound has just crept all the way along the lines, uh, eventually reaching our generation, e- even though mm. we are Asian Australian. Um, mm. So maybe maybe that's it. But yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be able to tell you really. Because I remember it being so weird. Because I because I grew up listening to like a lot of rock and metal, mm. and then when I started hanging out with a lot more Asian people, I was mm. like, why why don't you guys like this? Like this is you know this is like the best shit. <laughs> um, I mean, like, you know, it's subjective, you know, uh, you don't have to like everything. Mm. Um, but yeah, back then it kind of, I guess it just kind of confused me. I mean, like these days, like I, even my taste might have softened a bit, but I'll still listen to like a lot of the hardcore stuff every now and again. Mm. Like I'll listen to old Slipknot where Corey Taylor just wants to talk about wanting to kill people yeah. all the time. Yeah, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe it's the emotions that, are connected yeah. to the music are not that consistent in in Asian culture. Like all that the anger, it's not yeah. really like an Asian thing to be that angry, right? Yeah, no, that's. I think that's true. A lot of to to me, like Asians in general, we're pretty. You know, we're we're a quiet bunch. Uh, we don't like to cause trouble. Mm. I mean, I think it's that's like a societal pressure thing as well. Yeah, like yeah. If, if you're going from Japan anger is seen as something that you should bottle up and, and hide from everybody, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, because you don't want to cause a scene. So, I mean, maybe that mentality, but, like... Yeah, but it's it's funny because in Asia, especially I think in Japan and Taiwan, there's a pretty big metal scene. But it's it's pretty niche still, right? I guess so. There's definitely not much of a scene in China um, because, well, they banned that kind of shit. Um, they, I think there's a, there's a rule in Asia where you can only be angry if you're at a LAN cafe. 
<laughs> that's that's yes. the appropriate venue to vent your anger. <laughs> yes, I, th- I think I think that's the case. But yeah, I, I think maybe I don't know. Like when I thought of the very specific Asian tastes, I would think you know uh, people like. When I was growing up, like I thought Asians just love R and B, C pop, K pop, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, like, they, uh... that's that's what I thought too. And like, <laughs> you know, it even extends to Asian clubbing. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you hear the term Asian clubbing, you immediately think of you know, of people like Usher and Neo, and you know those kinds of songs. Yeah. Um, even though you know, uh, Asian people do like dancing to house music or or you know. Uh, trance and stuff like that but like yeah, the first the, thing you the, think of is the west, the west the west the west side asians from my <laughs> neck of the woods yeah, yeah. doing all the doing all the chopping and whatnot <laughs> chopping. <laughs> yes yeah but they would, they would go to what was that what was that festival well one of those big dj um, festivals i can't um, i can't remember the name stereo, of them now. stereo sonic yeah stereo sonic <laughs> and defcon yeah. yeah, people that do a lot of drugs, like like that kind yeah, of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's definitely a, definitely not a not a hangout that I'm gonna be. But yeah, I, I think it's just pretty interesting the difference between like um, what we consider is like what Asians listen to. Well, I've got I've got one last question for you before we wrap this up. You know, mm-hmm. we you know we know we like it. We like a bit of karaoke, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. shit. <laughs> so, um, what's your What's your current go-to karaoke song? I mean, the last time I went karaoke, I got fucking COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty recent then, <laughs> yeah. Um I mean, I could I can definitely tell you the ones I went to in the past. Yeah. But these these days, I, I like singing the um, the the uh, Attack on Titan the third opening song. <laughs> Um, Which one Red is Swan. That? It's, <laughs> it's not the current the, one, is it? The current one's pretty. No, dope. no, no. It's the <laughs> it's the one where they changed the band. It's a Red Swan by Yoshiki okay. featuring Hyde. Um, it's the what arc is that one where they go into that like new town and then there's like the guy that goes Kenny. No, oh. you know, yeah, right, right, right. okay, the Kenny the Ripper stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's right. it, the Kenny the. Ripper I can't, stuff. I can't remember the theme song. Well, I only remember two of those theme songs, and the first one is that one that goes na 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 yega, and and the the latest one, uh, which I don't think you've seen yet, but it's it's very screamo. It's good. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, I need to, I need to watch that because that's kind of that's our, that's our job. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, yeah, no, it's it's. I'm not sure what I would sing now, but I mean, back then, I could definitely tell you the songs I sang back then. Depending Easy. on level of drunkness, okay. So when, think... when you're tipsy, <laughs> what, what's that song? Oh, well, I'll see you like Arctic Monkeys, wasn't I? Mm. And then when you're really drunk, and then when I'm really drunk, it's it gets like, sad. Be, it gets a bit sad, it, doesn't yeah. it? Tell me? <laughs> I, I do. I do sing a lot of Radiohead. Like I'll, <laughs> sing, I'll, I'll I'll sing pre Radiohead. Like I'll sing Fake Plastic Trees yeah. when I'm tipsy. But then when I'm drunk, I used to sing Creep, and I'd be on the floor. <laughs> and then that, like, yeah, I'd like lose my shit. Yeah. Um, I remember I, I broke a wall at karaoke once when I was singing Crew Love. By Drake at the oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, um, I, yeah I, I like singing a lot of the the Screamo songs. Like, I like singing "Bring Me the Horizon." <laughs> um, but what about you? Yeah, I mean, I like I like me some Ed Sheeran, Tavi. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I sing that when I'm I'm fairly sober, though. Um, mm. But then you know, with when I get more, you know, the sober songs are like things like Ed Sheeran and um, and some Disney songs, kind of like crowd pleasing songs, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, stuff that you know anyone can kind of get into. Um, but then when I'm really drunk, I will probably put on like an obscure Usher song that I definitely don't have the singing ability to pull off. But mm. you know, when I'm drunk, I can do anything. You know, so <laughs> I put one yeah. of those on. Or, um, yeah, maybe a Japanese song as well. Yeah, stuff that, you know, I um, need to warm up to because uh, they're a bit harder to do. Yeah. <laughs> and they sound a lot better when I'm drunk. I'll tell you that well, much. <laughs> well, I remember back in the day when we went, we did all the K-pop stuff. Like, we'd sing, like, SNSD. Yeah. We'd sing Big Bang. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, we and then we'd try to, we'd try to reenact the MDs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
when we used to sing that um that two AM song. The uh, one with the know. rain? <laughs> <Is that it>? <laughs> <laughs> Was, I, I can't. I don't know the English. I've got the English title, but it's, oh, it's, like, got, a, it's got a pretty go long. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got a pretty long title, I think. Yeah, uh, and then and then like I think I poured water on you, or someone <laughs> poured water on me when when it was when it was like the rain part, and just kind of like the really high the high part, the high voiced part of the song. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good fun. Yeah, uh, man, we get was, really messy when we go karaoke. Eh? Yeah, well, we we used to. It's definitely, it's definitely calmed down. Uh, like we'll I can't see. get, I can't get back to that same energy these days. I and if I tried, you could. I reckon if you tried hard <laughs> enough. <laughs> I mean, I, I I tried, and then I got COVID. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, I, I don't think I don't think my body wants me to retread those days where we would literally piling on each other when we would sing like. Um, a Lincoln Park song, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, fucking breaking um, walls and shit. Commando rolling into into <laughs> Commander rooms, rolling into rooms, <laughs> knocking over all the glasses. Yeah, I think Let's I think we can up. wrap this one up. Yeah, okay, all right, guys. Yeah, uh, what kind of music do you like? Uh, do you have any thoughts on on um, the taste of a t- music taste of Asians? Uh, what kind of music did you guys grow up with? Is it yeah, I'm genuinely interested. Is it similar to to mine or similar yeah. to Tavi's experiences? Because I think with us yeah, living yeah. in Australia, you know, it's such a multicultural place. Mm. Um, so that, you know, even though Tavi and I grew up together and are like super close, you know, we had obviously mm. had super different uh, experiences when it comes to music. So uh, I'm interested to hear what what side of the spectrum you guys are on. Um, you can let us know, uh, get in touch with us at two Asian blokes at gmail.com. Join our Facebook group to be part of the conversation or follow us at, uh, on Instagram at two Asian blokes. If you want to see more reels with my shitty music, you know, <laughs> you know, they're all up there. Uh, check it out. Follow us. Uh, yeah. Thank you as always for listening guys. We're signing off. Peace out. See ya. See ya. See ya.